Welcome to the coming apocalypse. Evangelist and pastor Paul Bagley will take you on a journey into the end times prophecy. He'll examine current world events and explain how they relate to the end times. For decades, Pastor Bagley has provided people all over the world with an understanding of today's world events from a biblical perspective. Now, here's your host, Pastor Paul Bagley. Welcome to the coming apocalypse. I'm Pastor Paul Begley, and today is going to be a very prophetic broadcast. You know, kicking off this brand new year, we need to understand the time that we're living in, and there could not be more intense situations. We're setting up for a scenario of a showdown. It's coming. And so I want you to understand, in these last days, the intensity of the new world order and the situation as it relates to the nation of Israel and the third temple and the three religions of the apocalypse that are converging toward the temple mount. All of this is going to, looks like is going to play out in front of our very eyes in this upcoming year. And we'll be back to tell you about that and the UN resolutions that just passed in just a moment. A brand new book I've just finished called Reflections from the Land of the Prophets. This book is filled with beautiful pictures, a pictorial, if you will, of the Holy Land, and some definite great insight to the prophets that once spoke mightily in the times leading us up to the present. It's a prophetic word, a reflection of what God has spoken, not only historically from the past, but for the future. Go to my website. It's available now. All right, here's what took place uh, just a few days ago. The United Nations passed six resolutions urging a concerted action, they said, to revive the peace talks. The General Assembly adopted six resolutions on the question of Palestine, the situation in the Middle East, and other related items. Matter of fact, here's a YouTube video that I put out breaking this news and information to the world, and then we'll come back after that and read the biblical ramifications of what the United Nations has just done. A prophecy alert, a prophecy alert. Are you serious? The United Nations yesterday voted to divide the land of Israel, voted to divide the city of Jerusalem, call and voted to demand Israel to withdraw from the Golan Heights. This is the United Nations uh, meetings and coverage. I have the complete documentation. I've been going through highlighting some of it. Unbelievable. Urging concerted action to revive peace talks. The General Assembly adopts six resolutions on the question of Palestine and the situation in the Middle East. Here's how it starts out. The General Assembly today adopted six resolutions on Palestinian and Middle East issues, ranging from Jerusalem to the United Nations Special Information Program on the question of Palestine. The Assembly adopted a resolution on a peaceful settlement of the question of Palestine by a recorded vote 153 to 7. Are you serious? The seven nations who voted against dividing the land of Israel were Canada, Micronesia, Israel, the Marshall Islands, Nehru, Palu, and the United States of America. There were seven nations who abstained and didn't vote either way. They were the Australians, Cameroon, Honduras, Papua New Guinea, Paraguay, Tonga, and Vanuatu. The rest of the nations voted to divide the land of Israel forcibly. Listen to what the language says. The assembly also, it says here, by the terms of this resolution, the assembly called for the intensification of efforts by the parties, including through negotiations 
with the support of the international community towards the conclusion of a final peace settlement. In other words, the UN is going to lead the charge and to make the final decision. They will, help, they will let the Israelis and the Palestinians participate in the negotiation, but ultimately they will drive it home, which is exactly what Netanyahu asked Obama to make sure they didn't do. But of course Obama's not running the entire UN, and America did vote against it. Um, so it's in the hands of the UN now. We've given the UN too much power. The new world order is trying to force the dividing of the land. Let me read. I got, I got a scripture for it. This is a prophecy alert. You'll need to go to Zechariah chapter 2 for read about three verses. Here's what else it says. The assembly also adopted a resolution on Jerusalem by a recorded vote of 149 to 7. Those seven nations against it were the exact same seven. Uh, with eight nations abstaining, they were the exact same eight. By its terms, the assembly reiterated its determination that any actions taken by Israel, the, and then they call them the occupying power, to impose its law, jurisdiction, and administration on the holy city of Jerusalem are illegal, therefore null and void, and have no validity whatsoever, and called upon Israel to immediately cease all such illegal and unilateral measures. The assembly has also stressed that a comprehensive, just and lasting solution to the question of the city of Jerusalem should take into account the legitimate concerns of both the Palestinian and Israeli sides. In other words, they voted to part the land of Israel into two nations, and they voted to remove Israel's jurisdiction power over the city of Jerusalem. And this is the 50th year since the city of Jerusalem was liberated back in 1967. Are you serious? By the terms of the resolution of the Golan Heights, the assembly demanded, I'm reading right out of their wording, demanded that Israel withdraw from all the occupied territory to the line of June the 4th, 1967. Go back to the pre-1967 borders and called on all parties concerned to exert the necessary efforts to ensure the re resumption of the peace process. This resolution received 103 votes to six against. Those six nations against were Canada, the, Fe uh, the uh, Micronesia, Israel, the Marshall Islands, Palu, and the United States. Uh, it goes on. There's more that goes on in the, there was six in all, but those were the main three. Israel to be divided, peaceably or forcibly, basically. Israel to surrender all rights to the city of Jerusalem and, and says that they don't have the jurisdiction and calls them the occupying power. And Israel to withdraw immediately, demanded to, to withdraw from the Golan Heights right now and to go back to the pre-67 borders. Folks, it has begun. Let's go. This is biblical prophecy. This is a prophecy alert. Now, if you look in the Bible, I'll show you where, they, where the, the prophet Zechariah said that this vote would happen. Wow, are you serious? This is what I was trying to say in that YouTube video. The United Nations took it upon themselves to bring these six resolutions to the floor. Now, first of all, folks, the veto power of the United Nations Security Council could have prevented the vote, like usually. I mean, why, why bring up a hornet's nest? Why force this two-state solution? Now, some of you may remember, uh, earlier in the year, I met with Yehuda Glick, Rabbi Yehuda Glick, now a member of the Knesset. He even invited me to the Knesset, to his office, and I'm discussing with him that the French 
uh, that 20 nations were in France drafting this very resolution to try to force a two-state solution upon the nation of Israel, and that Israel or the Palestinians, neither one, were present at the meetings. And I'm saying to him, do you realize they're doing this? And he basically got a little bit upset because he doesn't want to hear about a two-state solution. He even said to me, look, they had their chance in 1947 and in, and in 1997 and in the year 2000. It's over. It's over. Well, it's not over as far as the world's concerned. They are trying to force it. So with the election of an, uh, President-elect Donald Trump, as he comes into office, this new administration, I think the Obama administration felt within themselves that it's time to go ahead and get this vote started before Trump gets in office, because he will certainly never let this vote begin. And that's what they did. They voted 153 to 7, and let's take a look at the spiritual ramification of what it is that they passed. Um, the Security Council could have blocked it. They all five agreed to it. In Zechariah chapter 2, the Bible says in verse 8, For thus saith the Lord of hosts, After the glory hath he sent me unto the nations, which spoil you. For he that touches you toucheth the apple of his eye. For behold, I will shake my hand upon them, and they shall be a spoil to their servants, and ye shall know that the Lord of hosts hath sent me. A powerful proclamation, a powerful prophecy, if you will, by the prophet Zechariah. Now, I, so what I actually see happening here is that they're touching the apple of God's eye. These three of the six resolutions have to do with, number one, what they're trying to do, of course, is force a negotiation. They're calling it an intensification of negotiation. In other words, the whole world is starting to swoop in around Israel and saying to Benjamin Netanyahu, the prime minister of Israel, and to President Maud Abbas of the Palestinian Authority, you two will either work out a deal or we will work it out for you. Now, the problem with that is this. 95% of the nations of the world don't even believe Israel should be a nation. You're dealing with the whole world, basically, wanting to remove... They, look, there's maps that were printed in textbooks uh, two years ago in a textbook in Texas and in other parts under Common Core. The map shows all the nations of the world. It never said Israel. It said Palestine. You can go to the United Nations. They have maps on the wall, folks. It doesn't say Israel. It says Palestine. <laughs> I mean, you got to understand, they consider Israel the occupied forces. And so that's what Zechariah is trying to say here. They're touching the apple of God's eye. So number one, forcible negotiations. Uh, and if need be, send in some type of security force to manage a two-state solution. That's exactly what the United Nations ambassador for the United States, Samantha Power, had already declared she believed that the president of the United States uh, should do. And then there's number two. They're saying that Jerusalem is, no, is not under the jurisdiction of Israel. They're calling it, uh, they're saying that, the, that it is an occupying power, that Israel is an occupying power, and that their laws and jurisdiction and administration of the holy city of Jerusalem were illegal and therefore null and void and have no validity whatsoever. Are you serious? Are you serious? Last time I checked, every time I've been to Israel, the, nation, the uh, city of Jerusalem is under Israeli control. And uh, both Jew and Palestinians live together, work together, uh, and tourists come in from all around the world. It's functioning beautifully. Uh, it's the, believe me, Israel's safer than America. I would much, I have no problem walking through the streets of Jerusalem. I'm a whole lot more worried about walking the streets of Chicago uh, uh, or Atlanta or New York City. So what you have to realize is a lot of this propaganda, a lot of this 
uh, is being done to try to force a two-state solution upon Israel. And uh, so that's the second thing. And then a third thing they did, as we said earlier, was the Golan Heights. Okay, they're trying to say Israel needs to withdraw. Well, let's go to Zechariah chapter 12. This is what it's all shaping up to be. It says in the Bible in Zechariah 12, verses 1, 2, and 3, The burden of the word of the Lord for Israel, saith the Lord, which stretches forth the heavens and layeth the foundation of the earth, and formeth the spirit of man within him. Behold, I will make Jerusalem a cup of trembling unto all the people round about when they shall be in the siege both against Judah and against Jerusalem. And in that day, I will make Jerusalem a burdensome stone for all people. All that burden themselves with it shall be cut in pieces, though all the people of the earth be gathered together against it. So what's happened is, by a vote of 153 to 7, the world is coming against Israel. And uh, there, was, there was about 50-some nations that abstained and did not vote at all. And only seven nations stood with Israel. Now, the United States was one of the seven, and so was Canada. Uh, uh, but the, the point is this. President Obama had veto power. He could have said, no, 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 no. We're not going to vote on this. He could have already seen the numbers were so stacked against Israel. But Donald Trump made a proclamation. He said once he became president of the United States, he was going to move the U.S. embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem and declare that Jerusalem is the holy city and the capital of Israel. And so that's why you see this mad dash the six resolutions adopted to start forcing uh, jurisdiction against Israel by a UN governing body. And folks, that is the new world order coming against the nation of Israel. That's exactly what Zechariah said would happen in chapter 2 by touching the apple of God's eye and in Zechariah 12 by coming against Jerusalem and Israel and making this stone and this cup of trembling taking place. I'll be right back with more on this subject in just a moment. Available from Paul Begley, his CD, Wayfaring Stranger. I'm just a poor wayfaring stranger Traveling through this will be no Wayfaring Stranger includes the title cut plus 11 other songs. No Order yours by visiting paulbegleyprophecy.com today. All right, so this, the intensity is definitely taking place in the biblical prophecies. The United Nations making a rush to judgment to get the ball on the table, to get, the, get it out on the floor, if you will, to start the process of a two-state solution. But the Lord knew this was coming in Zechariah chapter 2 when he warned them not to touch the apple of God's eye. And then Zechariah starts to prophesy of this cup of trembling, burdensome stone as it refers to Jerusalem. And of course, the Temple Mount. Here's one for you. This blew my mind last night. Google Maps. You can get on Google Maps and you can look down at the city of Jerusalem. And you can zero in on the Temple Mount, and you will see the Dome of the Rock mosque there. And to the right, there's, a, there's some little buttons at the bottom. If you push one of them, little blue dots show up. If you click on those blue dots, they will show you actual pictures of different things right on the streets of Jerusalem, even right on the Temple Mount. You get a, you get a ground level view. You can even go inside the Dome of the Rock Mosque and see what it looks like on the inside. But here's what's unbelievable. There's one little blue dot just over to the right. If you click on it, it's the third temple appears. It's, it's Solomon's temple. There it is. And you can go in there and you can look around. It's 3D. It's as if it's there. The thing is, all the rest of the little blue dots are actual structures that are in the city of Jerusalem. Why in the world? And guess what? It's built right 
next door to the Dome of the Rock. In other words, they, it's not on top of it. it isn't, they didn't knock the Dome of the Rock down and replace it with the temple. They put it adjacent to the temple. Exactly what Rabbi Yehuda Glick told me is the plan to build the third temple, a modified Solomon temple adjacent to the Dome of the Rock and not to disturb the Dome of the Rock. And then, of course, to build a museum up there as well so that the tourists can come and go in and try to have some type of peace and safety. But we know what the Bible says. When they say peace and safety, then cometh sudden destruction. And so, matter of fact, look at Zechariah 12. The Lord is very upset about this, uh, trying to divide the land of Israel. And it says in verse 8, in Zechariah 12, verse 8, In that day shall the Lord defend the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and he that is feeble among them at that day shall be as David, and the house of David shall be as God, as the angel of the Lord before them. God, in other words, will stand up for the nation of Israel and the Jewish people. Verse 9, And it shall come to pass in that day that I will seek to destroy all nations that come against Jerusalem. That's not good if you're voting 153 to 7. To what? To tell Jerusalem, to tell the nation of Israel that they have no jurisdiction, that they're the occupying power, that they're that the holy city of Jerusalem, that they're in charge of it, their authority is illegal, therefore null and void, and had no validity whatsoever? I don't think I would want to be on this list of 153 nations. Now, the United States and Canada voted against these resolutions, but President Obama allowed the vote to happen. He will personally have to deal with that himself, and I can take him to Scripture if he needs help, in the book of Genesis, the Bible tells us the Lord will bless him who blesses Israel, but he will curse him who curses Israel. Some folks need to take a step back. Even some in the body of Christ might need to take a step back and understand the relationship we as Christians have with the nation of Israel. Dr. Lester Summerall may be, the, was the, without question, he may have been the uh, supreme authority, if you will, of the evangelical a uh, Christian movement to bring to the forefront the responsibility as Christians and the relationship with Israel. That is why I think Lacy Tours has went and made trips to Israel for 50 some years in a row. And I can tell you, many other great ministers on this network and others have done the same thing. They've stood strong uh, for the nation of Israel. Why? Because we've read the Bible and we know what it says. And so we're trying to help you as a Christian, if you're not saved, keep an eye on what's going on with Israel because it is God's prophetic timepiece. No question about it. But the Lord does show some mercy to those who do stand with Israel. And look at verse 10. And I will pour upon the house of David and upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem the spirit of grace and of supplications. And they shall look upon me whom they have pierced and they shall mourn for him as one mourneth for his only son and shall be in bitterness for him as one that's in bitterness for his firstborn. God is saying, I'm not, only, not only is God going to defend the nation of Israel that was rebirthed in 1948, not only is he going to stand against any and all nations that would try to destroy it or take its authority away from the nation of Israel, but God's going to pour out the spirit of grace and mercy and compassion for salvation for those that will believe in Jesus Christ, both Jew and Gentile. God will show grace and mercy. The Bible tells us this. And so what we're witnessing here, what we're watching right here is a prophetic event. A, a, a absolutely, we're starting this year off with an incredible scenario setting up. President-elect Donald Trump will have the greatest challenge of any human being yet known to man. he have to stand with Israel, and to do it, he'll have to stand up against 153 nations of the world. I'll be right back in just a few moments after this.
Folks, let me tell you something. I have a book I really recommend you should get. You go to my website at www.paulbegleyprophecy.com. I have a book entitled The Zombie Apocalypse. Now, it has to do with actual 35 actual accounts of demonic possession and manifestations that uh, is very troubling but will help you understand how demon spirits actually work in these last days. I highly recommend you get it also for your teens and college students to help explain to them the pitfalls to not fall into these uh, sorcery or witchcraft seances, Ouija boards, or some video games that could alter the mind and the soul of your child. Again, this book, it's only at my website at www.paulbegleyprophecy.com. There you'll find it on the products page. It'll be a blessing to you, insightful, and you'll bless the ministry. All right, all right. I tell you, I love the Lord. I tell you what, His mercy endureth forever. Matter of fact, I'm going to read one more verse for you to show you God's love and mercy. Zechariah chapter 13, verse 1. In that day, there shall be a fountain opened up in the house of David and to the inhabitants of Jerusalem for sin and for uncleanliness. The mercy of God, the city of the great king, Jesus Christ, Yeshua, the Messiah, the Savior of the world. He's coming back and he will live and reign a thousand years in the new Jerusalem. He will set up his kingdom. And let me say to you, don't be left behind. Don't miss the greatest opportunity of your life. Give your life to Jesus Christ. I'd love for you to come to my website at www.paulbegleyprophecy.com. We do a daily show every day from 12 noon to 2 p.m. Eastern and a broadcast live on Sunday nights. We call it Sunday Night Live from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern. There's live chat rooms there. You can get in there. There's people 24 hours a day that in the chat room that you can go there and they'll pray with you. Uh, listen, we'll send Bibles to those that need it. Uh, we want to help those that are sick. But the most important thing, folks, are you saved? Have you been born again? Have you been washed in the blood of the Lamb? Uh, it's time to understand that God is reaching people with His love and mercy. I'd love for you to just give your life to Christ. You just call upon the name of the Lord, and the Bible said you shall be saved. 